Welcome to the Raven Space on YouTube. My name is Jason, and this is Raven Space Daily, where we talk about Baltimore Ravens news every single weekday. Please do me a favor if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button for more great Baltimore Ravens content. I want to give a special shout out to our Patreon subscribers because without you guys, none of this can happen. We have three great news stories for you guys today. We're going to hop right in to the first news story of the day. And this news story comes from NFL.com and it talks about Brandon Williams. If you guys watch the show, you know that I've talked about Brandon Williams and I've said that, you know, he's a great run stopper, but he's a very average pass rusher at the defensive tackle position. Well, it's not just me who says that. He also says that. Um, and he's talked to ESPN about how he wants to improve in his ability to pass rush. And he's been working on that this offseason. I'm going to read you guys the quote that he gave to Jameson Henley from ESPN. And he says, I need to get my sacks up. I need to get my pass rushing up. I'm excited. I just had a meeting with our D-line coach about me kind of fine tuning. I have the run stop. I can still work on it, obviously, but I'm trying to work on my pass rush, trying to get out there and do the best I can. Um, and this is great because it shows that he is aware. Now, it is true that the Ravens really didn't pay him to be a pass rusher. They did pay him to be a run stopper. But if he can add that part to his game, he can become one of the dominant defensive tackles in the NFL. So, for example, you have a player like Aaron Donald who plays defensive tackle, but he is a great, great, great pass rusher. Um, and, of course, I don't think Brandon Williams can get like that because, again, Brandon Williams is a 3-4 body build where he's built low to the ground and he's, he's you know, a little meatier, a little fatter versus Aaron Donald who's just an athletic freak, really, at that defensive tackle position. But if Brandon Williams can increase his sack total, it would be a great thing. Over the last four years, Brandon Williams has four and a half sacks. So he's literally averaging one sack a season, which is not a good thing for the Baltimore Ravens, especially as a player who plays most of the snaps on defensive line. So hopefully if he can improve and get better, um, and again, he does face a lot of double teams, but if he can increase his sack total to three in a season, four in a season, at a defensive tackle position, that is a huge thing. It's super huge. So hopefully he can do that. I'm um, expecting him to get better. Uh, we'll see. Let me know if you guys think he can get better in the comments below. I think he's a great run stopper, but he has one final piece to add if he wants to become one of the top defensive tackles in the NFL on a consistent basis. And we're going to move on to the next story. And the next story is a little critical of the Ravens. I know you guys sometimes think I'm a little too critical, but it's not me. I'm just telling you guys the facts. And here uh, it talks about the Ravens using 10% of their 2017 cap space on players that are no longer with the team. I'm going to give you guys an example. Eugene Monroe, who used to be a left tackle for the Baltimore Ravens, was a great left tackle in his prime, but he fell off toward the end of his career with the Ravens. Um, and right now, he's counting on the Baltimore Ravens cap for $4 million. So, again, $4 million that Ravens cannot use because of the player that they let go. Right now, the Ravens are using 10%, which is the second most in the league, the only team with more is the LA Chargers. So you guys have to think that 10% of the cap equates to $16.7 million. And imagine all of the offensive linemen, receivers, uh, pass rushers that we could have you know, put a bid in for. For example, if we had that cap room, it is very feasible that we could have kept uh, Ricky Wagner, right? That's a very feasible idea. Uh, we may have could have kept check. very feasible, if we had that cap space. But again, we pay money for free agents and trades that didn't reach out to the end of their contract. So I'll read you guys some of the players on this list just so you can know. So you got Eugene Monroe, you have Dennis Pitta, uh, you have Sharice Wright, Elvis Dumerville, and Jeremy Zuta. And so again, this shows you that all these players that just didn't work out with the Ravens because of injury, uh, because of bad play performance, and we've made more bad bets on players than other teams have in a league. So again, this is just a knock to see that we have to better manage our money. Um, and again, if you build through the draft, you know, it's harder to do this versus what the Ravens have been trying to do. Like they try to build through uh, free agency and trades, and that's going to be hard to continue and not have this dead cap money. And let me know in the comments below if you think dead cap space is a problem for the Ravens. Again, we have one of the lowest cap rooms right now and a big 
portion of it is that they cap space. So, and then the third story of the day comes from the Bleacher Report, and it talks about the biggest risk for each NFL team. And again, for the Baltimore Ravens, is that they let two high quality offensive linemen go. So, if you guys don't know, the two linemen that they're talking about is Jeremy Zuta and Ricky Wagner. Um, again, great players. Ricky Wagner uh, had a very high price. Zuta was on the Ravens. Um, I don't think they were happy with his performance and they traded him to clear up some cap space. And so what the Bleach Report is saying is that the Ravens were already a uh, bottom half offensive team last year, but now they don't have two good offensive linemen and they expect to be better. So what it's going to take to prove the Bleach Report wrong is that our linemen step up. James Hurst is one, and I've talked all about James Hurst. Um, I do not think he's good. Um, that's I'm going to leave it at that. And then you have the center position where we just don't know who's going to play there. And whoever does play there won't be a seasoned veteran starter in the league, right? So it's going to take some time for them to get better and gel. Now, again, a great asset to have on your team is Marshall Yonda, a pure vet, a future Hall of Famer, in my opinion. Um, I think that he will help make them better just from teaching them by playing next to them, you know, by covering up some of the mistakes and different things like that. But again, this is an issue that the Ravens offensive line is very suspect right now. Again, I'm going to tell you guys, and you've heard this before, that other than Marshall Yonda, the Ravens do not have an offensive lineman that has played more than 16 games. And that is scary. And that is a true scary thing. But hopefully the Ravens coaches can coach him up and we have a chance to be a good offensive line. I don't think we can be great, but we can be good. And that should be enough for the Baltimore Ravens. And the last segment of the show is the Ravens mailbag question of the day, where we answer your guys' questions here on Raven Space Daily. And this question comes from Cakes Mitchell. Uh, by the way, Cakes Mitchell has a great YouTube page where he talks about music. Check it out. But his question for, about the Baltimore Ravens is, what do you think will be our toughest matchup this season? The Packers? Thank you so much for your question, Cakes. Um, and again, shout out to Cakes. He is a Patreon member. So, you know, shout out to him. Your name will be in gold. And my answer to this question is the Oakland Raiders game we have week five. And there's a lot of reasons that I say this. So when you look at the way the schedule breaks down, two weeks before this game, we have to go against the Jaguars in London. No bye week, come back and play one of the most emotional games that we have in the Steelers. Um, and then after that game, we have to go to the West Coast and play the Raiders. And also, in my opinion, the Raiders are the most talented team on our schedule this year. Um, again, if Derek Carr is in the game and he plays like he did last year and he plays that contract that he earned, then it's going to be very hard for the Ravens to beat them. Again, it is very arguable that the Raiders were the second best team in the AFC until Derek Carr got injured. Um, and I, in my opinion, they are the only team last year that could have gave the Patriots a run for their money. And again, if they're healthy and they're all, you know, going and shooting, then it's going to be very difficult to stop them. I think they're a great offensive team led by a great quarterback. Um, and I think they have one great defensive player that can change a game. In my opinion, that's going to be the hardest game on our schedule. It's, again, in California, too. So the travel messes up the Ravens. We've seen it in the past. And I think it's very possible that can happen again. Uh, this year it's a good question thank you so much cakes and this has been an episode of raven space daily thank you guys so much for watching i truly appreciate it please uh, follow us on social media again subscribe to the raven space youtube for more great Baltimore ravens content and thank you guys so much go ravens